नमस्कार वेलकम टू अनदर एपिसोड ऑफ एडिटोरियल अच्छा आई गॉट टू टॉपिक्स फॉर यू टुडे माय टॉपिक नंबर वन इज मिस्टर नारायण मूर्ति द फाउंडर ऑफ इंफोसिस ही सेड दैट इंडिया इज इकोनॉमी एट स्टॉल्ड ड्यूरिंग यूपीए टू टाइम ही सेड ही रिस्पेक्ट्स डॉक्टर मनमोहन सिंह अ लॉट एंड ही हैज अ लॉट ऑफ एडमिनेशन फॉर हिम बट दैट बींग सेड ही सेड इंडिया इज इकोनॉमी हैट स्टॉल्ड ड्यूरिंग UPS two time, really. Let's talk about that. My next topic is a is a short one, and that is about Indo-American relationship. A lot is being spoken about Indo-American relationship. We will talk about that. Topic number two. Let's get right into the show. Okay. So while speaking to IIM students, uh, Mr. Narayan Murthy said that. Uh, You see, the Indian economy had stalled. In fact, I will tell you exactly what he said. He said Indian economic activities under the UPA two government stalled, despite the fact that Manmohan Singh, the extraordinary man, was in the helm of affairs. He said the economy stalled. Okay. Now let's. But he also said that Dr. Manmohan Singh was an extraordinary person. He was an extraordinary economist, which he has also always maintained. now before we get into the depth of uh, this discussion before we get into the depth of this discussion there are two things i want to make clear first of all mr narayan murthy is a person who is admired by a lot of people including me he is an aspirational figure because he 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 built his company from his residence to to uh, to a global giant so an absolute aspirational figure a lot of respect for the man a lot of respect for the man okay but the point that i am just trying to make is just trying to put my point across he put his i am just trying to put my point across which does not mean that in any form or shape i am trying to disrespect him okay it's just my i beg to differ with him is what one can say okay while he says that you know dr manmohan singh is a he is a fantastic economist and all of that he says i used to be on the board of hsbc in london that is between 2008 and 2012 in the first few years when china was mentioned two or three times in the board room during the meetings india would be just mentioned once is it dekho yaar kya hai ki internationally hum kuch zyada mention nahi hota tha people were not mentioning about it people did not been talk about us they were talking about china in hsbc board but nobody spoke about india okay so he says that india almost stalled economically we were not doing too well now you see you see it's 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 a very simple thing you know when i say that somebody is not studying well this student doesn't is not doing well in his studies what do i normally check i check the progress report correct i would check the progress report and i would say that listen this is his progress report he failed in six subjects he failed in four subjects so he is not doing too well make sense so i wanted to say a learned man and such a honorable person like uh, narayan murthy when he says that the economy is stalled a lot of other people also had said that but then theek hai they are they are, they are okay but narayan murthy saying that i really wanted to deep dive and find out as to why he possibly said it so i first thing i tried to do is try and check our gdp theek hai na so i thought let us compare gdp from 2009 10 11 12 13 14 to then take 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 theek hai na so i thought we'll compare and we'll see ke bhai if if the economy had stalled between 2009 and 2014 then the gdp should be completely flat isn't it that's when i started checking our gdp and this is how our gdp flows 2009 we were 7.9 2010 we were 8.5 2011 we fell to 5.2 2012 we went to 5.5 2013 we went to 6.4 2014 we were 7.4 so the gdp was like this it was in 7.9 and came down to 7.4 between it went to 8.5 came down to 8.2 so it was quite active if the economy had stalled i wonder how our gdp was active like the way it is now let us look at 2015 2015 we were 8 2016 we were 8.3 2017 we were 6.8 2018 we were 6.5 2019 we were 3.7 2020 
we should not take 2019 and 2020 into consideration because they were COVID uh, years. So let's keep that aside. 2020, we were 8.9. 8 what was the difference uh, between uh, our economy 2009 to 2014 versus 2014 to 2021? It is more or less the same. In fact, to a certain extent, from 2009 to 2014, one would say it was better because it was going up and down. Up and down, the economy is vibrant. The economy is working. So, I was surprised. I said, why would he say that? What made him say that it was stalling? Okay. Then I thought maybe, okay, he must be talking about maybe hunger index. Okay. Hunger index, you know, we improved. All of a sudden, after 2014, we improved. We, between 2009 and 2014, we were in bad shape. So let us look at that. Hunger index in 2009 was really bad. It was 65. We were 65 out of uh, 84 countries. Hunger index in 2010, we were 67 out of 84 countries. 2011, 67 out of 122 countries. Uh, 2012, 65 out of 120 countries. 2013, 63 out of 123 countries. 120 countries, my apologies. 2014, 55 out of 120 countries. So we actually improved as far as hunger index is concerned. Now, uh, let's go to 2015. We were 80 out of 117 countries. In 2016, we were 97 out of 118 countries. In 2017, we were 100 out of 119 countries. In 2018, we were 103 out of 132 countries. In 2019, we were 102 out of 117 countries. In 2020, 94 out of 107 countries. And 2021, we were 101 out of 106 countries. What has improved and what stalled? Didn't get it. Hunger index is fine. GDP more or less the same. So on what basis do we make comments that the economy is stalled? I failed to understand. Now, even if you look at the Infosys annual report, Infosys revenue, which is um, the source is money control that we have taken these figures from. Infosys revenue according to money control 2008 it was 15,648 and it is risen to 79,047 for Infosys. So every year, year on year they had growth. So even their own revenue did well. So what didn't do well? Which is what I am failing to understand. What was not doing well? They did well even in their revenue they did well as far as uh, the country did uh, okay as far as economy is concerned. The, the hunger index was kind of more or less the same. So what made somebody make a statement that Indian economy had stalled? What was the basis of that statement? And a person like Narayan Murthy making that statement. What was the basis of that statement? Unless and until maybe things didn't work out for Narayan Murthy or his companies or his group of companies or the companies that he's interested in. That's a different issue. That's a different issue. That could be his personal issue and his personal problem. But as far as the nation is concerned, making such a statement, I didn't know where the statement came from. That's my topic number one. Let's get into my topic number two. So, um, for starters, let me start by saying that um, I'm a huge admirer of Mr. S. J. Shankar, our external affairs minister. Why I admire him is because he speaks his mind. He speaks clearly and he puts, he articulates his points very well. He's a straight bat. So I like him. That being said, I want to talk about this whole halla bulla about the Indo-American relationship. I see, I hear a lot of channels talking about, you know, how America treats India, how Biden walks in from, you know, the other side of the, of the platform to this side of the platform to greet our prime minister, how America finds India so important and all that. When I hear all this, I think that, you know, this is one thing that we need to be very clear as Indians. Therefore, I wanted to put my point of view and therefore this editorial. You see, this entire episode started with uh, the US assistance uh, to Pakistan for F-16 sustain, sustenance package. F-16 sustenance package. Now, uh, Pakistan was given this F-16 sustenance package and uh, America said, you know, it is not to kind of fight with India and all. Huh? They said, they said it is only to fight terrorists. To which as Jay Shankar and very rightly so said that you know you are not fooling anybody by saying these things. Isko fool kar rahe ho yaar. 
Pakistan will take F-16 to what? Go for round trips? They would take F-16 to combat or attack India. Which terror group will they go and attack with an F-16? So who are you fooling? Said Mr. S.J. Shankar. And he was absolutely correct. You see, it's not that, you know, uh, America wants to have great relations with India. America gives some special treatment to India. Or America, America is very keen to do trade with India. Or America is very keen to, do close, to be close to India, especially after the China issues. So all this talk that has been given, I think it stands no water. You know, I'll tell you why. Because America is one country that only thinks about itself. I am not saying that is wrong. That is how it should be. I agree to that. But let us be very clear about it. America through the statements makes it very clear that Bhaiya, I need Pakistan as much as I need India. There is no difference in my eyes. I will do good things for Pakistan. You ask me, I will do good things for you also if I can. But I will not do any, give you any preferential treatment over the other. Neither will I give Pakistan any preferential treatment over you, nor will I give you any preferential treatment over others. Now, this is what America says. Now, what, whether one would call sustenance package, F-16 sustenance package as a preferential treatment over India, that's a question. That's a question that still remains. But the fact is, it is not that America has been, you know, enamored with the Vishwa Guru and, you know, they are only looking at India now and they don't want to be nice to Pakistan because they want to go, maybe be nice to India and all that. All that is not happening. Nothing much has changed in our relationship. Ups and downs happens. Even before the, we, had, we had ups and downs. So now also we have got ups and downs. So nothing much has changed in, 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 in our relationships. And I think America, Indian-American relationship, Indo-American relationship will not have much of uh, change either because America only looks at American interest. And American interest will always be to be okay with the, Pak with the Pakistan and in India and uh, possibly uh, 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 countries uh, in this part of the world. Especially when China is, 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 is kind of dominating this part of the world. It will always be in their interest and they are following it. So let's not get misguided or let's not, you know, misinterpret uh, this or, you know, uh, uh, build a narrative that, you know, we are anything special. We are not. We are another country for United States of America. This is the point I wanted to make uh, through this editorial. And uh, till I see you next time, that is day after tomorrow, Saturday at uh, 10 PM Namaskar Now be the first to know about the latest updates on our new news app go on your android or ios search for hw news network download our app choose the language you prefer to get updates in and be up to date with the latest news